Some may consider her the master of the Palace of the Earth Spirits. Others know her as someone to be wary as she has the powers to read your mind. And others think of her as that elementary school girl with lots of pets. I will refer to said girl as Satori. Hello, Magic here, and welcome back to another episode of Character Profile, the series where I take an in-depth look of a character from games, print work, fan-related stuff, and anything that can be associated with Satori will be discussed here. To note, all information that's gathered here are from the wiki or other sources linked in the description, just so we're on the same page. So without further ado, let's begin the character profile for Satori Komeiji. Name and their meaning. We're gonna take a quick glance at Satori's name. Her surname, Komeiji, translated as Ancient Bright Earth, is an actual Japanese surname. Seen mainly in the Yamanashi Prefecture. Cool, I think. The kanji you're seeing right now in Komeiji is also used in the Japanese title of Subterranean Animesium, which I will indicate. Her given name Satori is also the name of her species Satori, but written in hiragana. For us English speaker, it doesn't change much really, correct me if I'm wrong. Satori can also be interpreted as this Satori, which you're seeing right now, which can mean um, understanding or enlightenment. Character Appearance We're gonna look at Satori's appearance. She has short purple hair with a black hairband and purple eyes. A red third eye is positioned over her heart with cords running to her head and wrists. Try not to hit the eye, that doesn't seem like it would be pleasant for her. She sports a blue shirt with yellow heart buttons and pink collar, a pink skirt with faint flowery pattern and pink slippers. Nothing too crazy for Satori. Appearance in games and print work. Let's review all the places she's shown up throughout the years. She first showed up in Subterranean Animesium. During stage 4, Reimu or Marissa invaded her home. They then questioned the master about the evil spirits in the geyser that brought them above ground. Suspicious, Satori read either of their hearts, only to find that above ground humans does not care about such things. Good old Marissa and Reimu, they really don't give two fucks. Thus, Satori decided to test her strength. After the encounter, she permitted the heroine's passage towards the Hell of Blazing Fires to ask her pets about their supposed problem. She shows up in double spoiler. She's the stage 9 boss. Aya and Hatate takes photos of the Mind Reader spell card. She shows up in Hopeless Masquerade as a background character. To no surprise, she's in the Palace of the Earth Spirit. I swear, if she did not appear in that stage in some capacity, I would have lost my shit. She's also in the Yokai Tanuki 4 stage. She's just standing around, chilling. Her next game appearance will be in Urban. She only showed up in Koichi's ending, better than nothing. Her last game appearance as of this recording would be Violet Detector. Here she teamed up with another girl to handle Sumiriko. She mainly showed up in Nightmare Wednesday. She's with Oku, Koichi, and Ran in that particular order. I can see the team up with Oku and Koichi since she knows them both very well. But fucking Ran? Now that's a curveball if I've ever seen one. Maybe it's because Ran represents an animal? Who knows? Her appearances in the print work are at an all-time low with all the characters I've reviewed so far. Her first print appearance was in Oriental Sacred Place Chapter 10 as a cameo. Her next one is in Wild and Horn Hermit. Here she only pops out in two chapters, Chapter 2 and Chapter 28 as cameos. Her last print appearance as of this recording is Symposium of Post Mysticism. Here she has an article created by AQ. Personality Satori is one of those rare, level-headed girls and not a total dick like some of the other girls. Animals loving you is always a good thing. Not only that, in Wild, Orin had mentioned prior to her mass buildup of evil spirits because of outside world events forcing her to tighten security, Satori used to allow leisure activities for the vengeful spirits in former hell. That's pretty cool for Satori, considering those spirits aren't exactly all that nice. Anyway, when the heroine arrives at the palace during the events of Subterranean, she is very suspicious and decides to fight against her by using debacle patterns in either girl's own mind or that of their partners. To be fair, when you got a random person invading your home, I think it's only fair to be fucking suspicious of said person. However, she appears to be loved by animals as they can't normally be understood in the first place. Being a mind reader has advantages there. She also cares deeply about her sister Koichi as well. In Urban Legend, when Kaisen beats Koichi in versus mode, Kaisen will say, quote, Oh, you're the young Missy from the palace. Your big sister's been worried about you. Also in Antenemy, when Byakuin beats Koichi, the monk will say, quote, 
Your sister sometimes visits our temple just to look for you. The fact that Satori had to leave her home, which is in form of hell, to visit Gensokyo to maybe find Koichi is a testament to how much she cares about her younger sister. It's not like Koichi can't defend herself, let me tell you. Occupation slash jobs. Now she's the mistress of the palace of the earth spirit. The palace was built on top of the ruins of the hell of blazing fire which dealt with lots of vengeful spirits. With her there being able to read their minds, they ain't revolting anytime soon. From the sounds of it, there's a lot of work to maintain the hell of blazing fire, so she gets her pets instead to handle each role. Both her main pets, Orin and Oku, handle the management of the area. Hey man, if it works, it works. Just don't tell Peter about that though. General information slash backstory. A little thing to mention about her backstory. The Yamas moved the astral site of hell away from the underground. That left many vengeful spirits around that needed to be controlled. I already mentioned this part but the palace of the earth spirit was created with Satori managing it. However, her ability which is to read minds caused her to be shunned by humans and most yokai. Over time, the only other residents in the palace were her pets who welcomed Satori's ability to read minds. Due to the difficulties in managing the hell of blazing fires, she started letting the pets do some of the work. Not only that, her place never gets visitors due to her power. I mean, Kanako, Miss Quote Mastermind, had to go behind Satori's back to get control of Hell of Blazing Fires. Hard to negotiate with someone who can read your scheming mind, that's for sure. We're also going to be taking a quick look at Satori's species, which is... Satori. Yeah, that doesn't sound fucking awkward. Satori is a type of mountain-dwelling yokai in Japanese folklore that is known to live within the mountain of Hido and Nino which is today's Gifu Prefecture. Very specific areas. They are famous for being the yokai that are able to read human thoughts. Satoris are said to approach travelers on mountain paths in a hominoid form and speak their thoughts aloud. Now in Subterranean, when you have the Marissa and Patchley team, the librarian will mention that the Satori species have an affinity with animals, and those animals tend to become powerful beast yokais. It would explain Oku and Arin. Those two ain't slouches, especially Oku with her powers. Titles! Let's blast through Satori's titles real quickly. She has The Girl Even the Vengeful Spirits Fear, The Sickness in Everyone's Heart, and lastly, The Yokai with the Lonely Silhouette. Ability Slash Powers While Satori is mainly known for being able to read the mind, she actually has a couple more, which synergizes well with her main ability. I like, I like. The main one is obviously reading the mind. As a Satori, Satori is capable of reading the heart and mind of any living creature, even vengeful spirits. This ability only works on those within her immediate presence. In Subterranean and Raymu's route with Surika, this is what the Oni had to say. I knew it! She can't tell what I'm thinking up here. It's so far away, I'm in a safety zone. So if you're far away from her, your thoughts should be good. It also doesn't work at all on her sister Kuishi. That's probably due to the fact that Koichi's actions and pretty much everything is affected by her subconscious. Another of her ability is Hypnotism. She's limited in this department however, but it does allow her to bring traumatic memories to the surface of a person's mind or induce amnesia. Amnesia doesn't sound fun. Combining all of this, she's then able to copy patterns. After learning of the trauma with her weak hypnotic powers, she could look into the memory and use the spell cards the girl had faced against. It ain't some pussy ass illusion, but the genuine deal. The only downside is that it's not a full complete copy. This could be due to said person's memory not fully remembering the spell card, or Satori doesn't have the original user's ability that allow them to use the spell card as effective. Either way, it's still menacing. Music! Unlike Hatate, Little Miss Satori actually has something to talk about, thank bloody goodness. For Satori's stage 4 theme, it's called Heartfelt Fancy. Her boss theme is called Satori Maiden, Third Eye. Really? Did we need it to add another Satori? Whatever, not my problem. Spell Cards Satori, without a doubt, has the most spell cards in the entirety of the game especially as a boss. Hell, maybe even more than Rayma and Marissa combined. The reason being is that she copies your partner's spell card, which is something I'll cover as well. 
Her first spell card, which is the same for all routes, is Recollection Terrible Souvenir for easy and normal, Recollection Terrifying Hypnotism for hard and lunatic. These next spell cards are dealt with when dealing with Reima and Yukari. Satori's second spell card in this situation is called Recollection, Double Black Death Butterfly. The third spell card is called Recollection, Flying Insect Nest. The fourth spell card is called Recollection, Boundary of Wave and Particle. Now these next spell cards are with Reimu and Tsuiko. So Satori's second spell card in this case is Recollection, Mount Togakushi's Toss. The third spell card is called Recollection, Night Parade of a Million Demons. The fourth spell card is Recollection, Deep Fog Labyrinth. Now this next batch of the spell cards happens when you have the team of Reimu and Aya. The second spell card is Recollection Wind Gods Leaf Veiling. The third spell card is Recollection Tengu's Macro Burst. The last spell card for this combo is Recollection Tori Whirlwind. Now that was simply for Reimu. We still have to deal with Marissa. Since Tori still used Recollection Terrible Souvenir for easy and normal and Recollection Terrifying Hypnotism for hard and lunatic as her first spell card. Now you deal with these spell cards if you're teaming with Alice. The second spell card is Recollection, Spring Kyoto Dolls. The third spell card is Recollection, Straw Doll Kamikaze. The last spell card for this combo is Recollection Return Inanimateness. That summed up the Alice combo. These spell cards occurred when you team up with Patchley. The second spell card is called Recollection Mercury Poison. The third spell card is called Recollection Princess Udine. The last spell card for this duel is Recollection Philosopher's Stone. Now this next batch is when you team up with Nidori. The second spell card is called Recollection Extend Arm. The third spell card is called Recollection Kappas Poro Oroka. The last spell card for this duel is Recollection Trauma in the Glimmering Depths.
Holy fuck, that was annoying. And that was just subterranean. Luckily, the spell cards become more reasonable, I assure you. We're going to be looking at Double Sprawler. In this game, she has three spell cards. The first spell card is Brain Sign, Brain Fingerprint. The second spell card is Heart Flower, Camera Shy Rose. The last spell card for this game is Recollection, Vague Recollection of King Kakuji. The interesting thing is that this is based on Kaguya's spellcard from Shoot the Bullet of all things. So random in my opinion. For the last game as of this recording, we're going to be looking at Violet Detective. The first spellcard Satori uses is Earth Spirit Sign, Mind Stellar Steel, co-owner with Oku. The second spell card is Perfect Mind Control, co-owner with Koishi. With their powers combined, I can see why the spell card is named after that. Ain't going to argue with that. The last spell card is Earth Mystic Sign, Shikigami of the Ego, co-owner with Ran. Like I said before, really ran on there. But hey, Zoom does what he wants. Relationships. We're going to be talking about her pets first. Orin and Oku. Satori has many pets in her home. I mean, look at this shit. One of the very few times we see Satori and she's busting out three random animals. A bird, a tiger, cheetah, whatever the fuck it is, and a cat. She also keeps blaze cats and hell ravens like Oku and Orin. Her pets manage the general stuff in the hell of blazing fires. The main people in charge, however, is Oren, who's in charge of the evil spirits, and Oku, who manages the hell of blazing fire. The thing is, we don't see Satori interacting with either of those girls. I mean, with her limited prince appearance, I can see why. But even so, we do know that Oku and Oren deeply care about their master. In the grimoire of Marissa, there's an illustration of Satori and her pets. At first, you may think they're just random animals, but they're in fact Oren and Oku in their animal form. How? Well, Oren has two tails, like this cat here. And the raven. Well, they normally have two legs, but this one has three. You could say it's a hell raven thing, but it's actually based on Yadagaratu's mythology. Yadagaratu is a divine three-legged crow. And remember, Oku did eat the spirit and gained its power. So it wouldn't be shocking if she had three legs in her raven form. With that explained, you can easily see that both Orin and Oku here are nuzzling their master very affectionately and blushing as well. If that's not love, then I don't know what is. The next important one is Koishi. Satori really cares about her sister and wants her to open her heart to others once more, which I don't blame her. Due to Koichi closing her mind, Satori has a hard time just seeing her. And I just mentioned earlier that in Byakura and Keizen's dialogue, Satori actually came to the surface to check up on Koichi. At the very least, Koichi still visits Satori from time to time, as shown in Koichi's ending in Urban. So it looks like things are still good with the sister, which is nice. Fun slash interesting facts. Let's look at some fun facts about Satori. We're gonna look at the spell cards. If we're not counting all the copy abilities she had used throughout the series, then at most she would only have three to four unique spell cards. I'm not counting Violet Detective as that's a combo spell card, which to be fair, sounds reasonable. But again, that's across all the games she's been in. Maybe not so much then. As of now, Satori is currently the only Toho Windows character who appears before her subordinate is introduced. Sounds about right. Satori showed up in Stage 4, Orin in her true form appeared in Stage 5, and Oku in Stage 6. Now I talked about this in the past interesting Toho facts, so let's review it again. Satori and Koichi's design may have been inspired by the 1939 painting by Mexican painter Frida Kahlo titled The Two Fridas. The subject is essentially two identical women. Sisters, clones, twin, whatever you want to label it, with visible hearts and external arteries that seem to connect and wrap around their shoulders and arms. Still a weird ass picture, which explains the girl's strange design at times. This next fact is a fun one, I'll have to showcase an older video to explain this point. If you take both of the character portraits from Subterranean and reverse or invert it, 
they become the other's color. Don't believe me? Let's test this out. Hey guys, so uh, as I said, I was gonna test it out. So let's do it. So let's open it up. Now I just gotta find the bloody thing. So I got a test file for you guys right here. So I got both their profile pics, Satori and Koishi. Okay, so let's do this. So let's go to colors, invert. As you see, Satori looks like Koishi. And now let's go with Koishi. Uh, let's let's switch her up now. Let's go to her layer. Uh, colors. Invert. And yes, she looks like her sister Satori. Yep, as you're seeing right now, it works completely like that. And I'll just reverse it just to show you guys. So yeah, she'll look like that. Reverse or change that and go back to Satori. Uh, invert it again. And yes, the the look they are pretty much I pretty much I would say the same as each other as long as you switch the colors up. So it's a really interesting a really interesting and cool thing to see that uh, if you change the colors to invert it, you get their uh, their sister's color, which is cool. I mean that that's pretty insane there. So yeah, uh, hopefully that satisfies your curiosity on this showing you all live right here. So it actually does work. Holy shit! Look at 2015 Magi. His wall was actually visible. Man, those were the times. Not surprisingly, Satori has more spell cards in one fucking game than any other characters in the series with a total of 76. Okina is second place with 46 spell cards in Hidden, which makes sense because she was a stage 6 and extra stage boss. Kaguya had 41 in Imperishable and the Fairies of Light individually with 40 cards in Fairy Wars. And remember, these spell cards are based on all difficulties as well. So yeah, that's a fuck ton, all right. Now this last fact is going to talk about another anime, a pretty famous one, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Satori's theme song is likely a reference to one of the background songs from the series called She Said Don't Make Others Suffer For Your Personal Hatred. It shares the same phrase and progression in the chorus as well as many musical similarities with Satori's theme. And the piece of music is originally used during a battle with the angel uh, whatever you call this, Saha Kuil, a giant red eye floating in the sky with the ability to jam communication. This is also likely due to the highly psychological nature of Neon. Let me play the track for y'all. Now let me play Satori's theme. Holy fuck, that is similar! Fanon stuff! We're now in the Fanon section. Fun times. Because of how her hands are coming out of her sleeves, only at her waist in her subterranean portrait, some fans believe that Satori has very short arms and draw her as such. I mean, those really do look like some midget arms right there. However, most artists draw her arms at normal length. I didn't know that was a thing. To be fair, I rarely pay attention to the official artwork, so maybe that's why. But with the Grimmar Marissa, it does appear that Satori has a regular sized arm. So that's a good thing for her. Everyday life would be a bit tougher. A common nickname for Satori is Satorin, similar to how Yukari is called Yukarin. Hey man, I always gotta have one of those nicknames. Due to her ability to read minds, and the similarity of the third eye to back beard of you damn dirty lolicon fame, a growing joke among fan artists depicts Satori as cognizant of and disgusted by lolicons. I mean, I can't exactly blame her for doing so. I would definitely lose it if I were in her situation. Now this next part deals with kanji, which I have no clue but it's still funny. Similarity, it has become common in fan art to break down the kanji of Satori, which you're seeing right now, into its component radicals. And add this katakana? Spelling out Shogorori, read as 5th grade elementary student lolly. Holy shit! You did not hear that from me! Her apparently small stature in her portrait seems to add to this. It is thus not uncommon to see her depicted wearing a Japanese elementary school backpack on her. I've seen the portrayal a few times. Western Toho fans have noticed a similarity between Satori's design and an image making fun of Zoom's drawing style. 
It is unknown if this is a coincidence or if Zoon is aware of that image. It would have been awesome if Zoon was aware of this. It would have been super meta right there. Satori's third eye is frequently portrayed in fan works as of having a mind of its own, reflected by expressions that do not match the Komeiji's facial expression and body language. Yeah, this one is something I have dealt with much more in Doshin works. Due to her copying powers, some fan arts like to showcase Satori cosplaying as the other girls, which I can see why. If you can copy other characters' specific spell cards, cosplaying seems much more reasonable in my opinion. Pairings! Now this next one shouldn't be too surprising because she does have pairings with her pets. Satori with Oren and Oku or Rin Sato or Ku Sato. Satori is shown to be very devoted to her pets even when they get out of control sometimes. There's always a sibling pairing when it comes to this. So Satori and Koisha are Sato Ko, the most common popular pairing that features either of these characters. In fact, it is pretty much the only mainstream pairing involving either of these characters. There's another one I've seen before, Satori and Romelia. I don't know what the pairing name would be called, but I'll just make it up for convenience sake. Sato Remy. Both are older sisters with one younger sister, both having servants slash pets, live in a big ass mansion, and younger sisters who could be considered stronger than the older one, and that's a lot of similarities if you ask me. Plus, their younger sisters are often paired with one another, so another fuel to add to this pairing. Now this next pairing shocked me the most, Satori and Patchley, a relationship between the quote, intelligent characters. The only reason it's a thing is because of this 4 coma work. Hey man, more pairings never hurt. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Which facts about Satori were your favorite? Would you be down to have her mind reading abilities? Do you think she's pretty smart in how she uses all of her abilities like that to copy the girl's spell cards? Or do you like Satori with the backpack? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Or Satori might start to read your minds. Don't know if you guys want to deal with that. Either way, this is Maja and thanks again for watching. <laughs>